Now when exposure, focus, and white balance settings have been chosen, the final step in taking great photos is composition. Now good composition comes mainly through experience and a creative eye, but the number one rule is to simplify. Your work will improve immensely if you do just one thing. Get rid of all the distracting or otherwise unnecessary elements that take away from the subject. Composition is essentially an editing process before you snap the shutter. Deciding what to leave in, what to leave out, and how to arrange the elements within the frame for the best effect. Rigidly following all of the rules of composition will not guarantee a good photograph, but they will help you design well-balanced images that are pleasing to the eye. Now remember, you are the artist, and you have to think about all of the elements in the frame, not just the subject. Most bad photos are taken because the photographer only thought about the subject at the center of the frame and forgot about everything else. Watch out for trees or poles growing out of people's heads, too much headroom, or too much background and not enough subject. Sometimes your mind exaggerates what you see through the viewfinder and you tend not to notice background distractions. What you end up with is a photograph with huge areas of wasted space around the edge and lots of clutter. Don't be afraid to get in close and fill the frame with your subject. A common error is the tendency to put the subject right in the middle of the frame, or to let the horizon cut the frame in half. This composition is dull, static, and uninteresting. To improve the composition, you can use a common photographic principle called the rule of thirds, which says that if you divide the frame into thirds vertically and horizontally, you should place the subject where two of the lines intersect to make the photo more interesting. This composition is more dynamic and better balances the subject and background. Also try aligning your horizon one third of the way from the top or bottom to emphasize a beautiful sky or an interesting foreground object. Many beginning photographers tend to take all their photos from eye level, and that can be boring. You should try kneeling down on the ground and taking the picture from a lower angle. Or you could stand on a bench, rock, or something like that to shoot the picture from above. Experiment with shooting from different angles and points of view, especially when photographing kids or pets. Another big mistake that beginners make is to shoot too many pictures this way instead of this way. You should get comfortable shooting with your camera turned vertically and shoot a lot of your photos in this orientation. Knowing when to shoot vertically or horizontally to get the best composition will become automatic as you gain experience. Try to keep the camera from tilting to the side when you take the picture, so your horizon stays level. If the horizon, fences, buildings, or other objects in the picture are sloping to one side, it can make your photo look like an amateur snapshot. Use the natural lighting to your advantage rather than fighting against it. Whenever you can, shoot people in the shade instead of the bright sun. And if that's not possible, try putting the sun behind them for a nice backlight effect. If you're shooting sports or action, wait for the peak moment. Why settle for this when you can have this instead, just a few seconds later? Use a wide open aperture to minimize the depth of field and separate the subject from the background. Use a fast enough shutter speed to capture the action without getting motion blur. Unless, of course, that's what you want. Get off the beaten path and position yourself at the right spot. Good composition won't come to you. You have to go find it. Don't hesitate to leave the sidewalk. Move across to the other side of the road to get a better angle. Or go down to the sidelines at your kid's football game. Good pictures can't be taken from a seat in the grandstands or out of your car window as you drive down the road. And finally, remember to take more than one picture of the same subject. Take several pictures from different angles, with different framing, different exposure settings, and even different white balances. Earlier I said that I like to shoot with a tripod, even when I don't really have to. Just before I click the shutter, I'll close my eyes for a second to try to clear my mind and forget about all the technical settings. Then I'll look through the viewfinder again and ask myself, is this likely to be something that I will want to put in a photo album or hang on the wall of my house? Will I be proud of this picture and want to show it to friends and family? If the answer is no, then I change whatever I need to change 
until the answer is yes.